please. Yeah, thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the previous speaker talked about sustainability or the lack of sustainability. And the lack of sustainability uh, leads to several symptoms. And one symptom is the climate change problem. But there are also other symptoms of the lack of sustainability, like uh, the loss of biodiversity, uh, or overfishing is another uh, symptom of the lack of sustainability. And there are many, many other symptoms of the lack of sustainability. And uh, this uh, applies not only to natural systems, you know, the financial crisis we are in, in Europe, you know, is also due to the lack of sustainability. So it basically governs uh, our whole life in a way. Now, I would like to focus on climate, uh, climate change, and, um, uh, you know, the discussion about sustainability uh, kind of started, uh, at least on a large scale, uh, uh, with the report by the Club of Rome, limits of growth. And in a way, uh, what the Club of Rome said in 1972, so more than 40 years ago, uh, was, well, it, it, it was a trivial statement. Uh, they just said, you know, if we continue to exploit the natural resources that nature provides without costs uh, to us, at this rate, then uh, it is foreseeable that at some point nothing uh, will be left, okay? And that's the lack of sustainability. Now, the problem, the climate change problem, has to do with resources, with the fossil resources. So on this planet, we produce energy uh, uh, mostly uh, by burning these fossil fuels. So we burn coal, we burn oil, and we burn natural gas. And uh, uh, you see here these smoking uh, chimneys, but the problem uh, is uh, uh, we, we can't see the problem, okay? Because if we burn coal, for instance, uh, if we burn the fossil fuels, then uh, we emit a gas, and this gas is carbon dioxide, CO2, okay? And gases uh, un are invisible, so we have no uh, sense for gases. We can't see them, we can't uh, smell them, we can't taste them, we can't hear them, and, and uh, we can't feel them, okay? And so we don't realize that uh, something unbelievable is happening, something really unbelievable. And I would like to show you this here. So uh, what we are looking at is the climate evolution over the last 800,000 years, over the last 800,000 years. So this is 800 years before present, 800,000 years before present, and this is today. And the green curve, the upper curve, uh, is the concentration of carbon dioxide, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And you see, yes, it has always varied, but within limits, at least during the last 800,000 years. But the current concentration of carbon dioxide is outside this figure. It's where this big green arrow points to, right? So, uh, we have reached a concentration of CO2 that is unprecedented, unprecedented in our history, in man's history. Now, you may wonder how old I am and how I can know this, okay? Uh, but this is not too difficult. So, uh, we, we can go to Antarctica, we can drill the ice, and we can take these ice cores. And these ice cores, they tell us the climate history. We can, for instance, analyze these little bubbles. And these little bubbles tell us the history of the Earth's atmosphere composition. And so what I'm showing here is a hard fact 
and nobody would dispute this. So it's a hard fact that the so-called greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide is one of those, methane, the red curve, is another greenhouse gas, have really reached values unprecedented, unprecedented uh, uh, for the last, say, one million years or so. Now, why is this a problem? It is a problem because uh, there is something uh, uh, that we call the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect guarantees mild conditions on this planet. Without the greenhouse effect, uh, we won't have moderate temperatures. Our temperature averaged over the whole surface would amount to approximately minus 18 degrees, minus 18 degrees. But we have the greenhouse effect, and this greenhouse effect is produced by less than 1% of the atmosphere, and these are the greenhouse gases. And one of those greenhouse gases is carbon dioxide. Okay, they are basically transparent for the solar radiation, for the sunlight, but they are not transparent for the infrared radiation, the invisible radiation, the long wave radiation that is emitted by the surface back to space. And so it's like a greenhouse. These greenhouse gases work like the glass of a greenhouse, and so the heat is trapped, and this is nice uh, because uh, uh, this has a magnitude of 30 degrees, okay, and therefore our temperature on our planet is not minus 18, but plus 15 degrees. But if we have understood this natural greenhouse effect, then I think the climate change problem becomes very obvious. If you start to increase the concentrations of these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, you intensify, you enhance this greenhouse effect. And so the temperature of the planet must rise. Now, in a way, we are carrying out a giant experiment with our planet. And this was uh, stated here by Roger Revel uh, uh, from uh, uh, the Scripps Institution uh, of Oceanography in La Jolla, California. And he made this remarkable statement in 1957, in 1957, in an interview with the New York Times. And he said, human beings are now carrying out a large-scale geophysical experiment, a large-scale geophysical experiment of a kind that could not happen in the past nor be reproduced in the future. And I would like to emphasize, we are carrying it out really a big experiment with our planet. So although I have studied, although uh, I, I, I'm a professor, although I teach climate physics at the university, you know, I don't know everything, okay? Actually, I, don't, I, I know only very little. And so I can't tell you exactly what will happen when we continue uh, uh, to emit greenhouse gases, especially carbon dioxide, in the atmosphere. But I have some idea, and I would like to share these ideas with you. One of these ideas was presented another 50 years ago by this guy, Svante Arrhenius, 1896. Svante Arrhenius was one of the major uh, physicists uh, during that time. He received the Nobel Prize uh, later on, and he published a remarkable publication. And the, the publication is entitled on the influence of carbonic acid in the air upon the temperature of the ground. Carbonic acid. So at those times, people didn't talk about carbon dioxide. They talked about carbonic acid, but they meant carbon dioxide. So if you translate this, the title reads on the influence of carbon dioxide in the air upon the temperature of the ground. So that's exactly the climate change problem. And he did computations. He did a lot of computations. So he also computed what may happen if the carbon dioxide concentration goes down. But 
he also computed what would happen if the carbon dioxide of the, of the atmosphere would increase. And in this red rectangle, uh, I highlight the calculation uh, uh, for the case that the carbon dioxide concentration, the pre-industrial carbon dioxide concentration, would double. Okay? So he did this for different latitude ranges, for different seasons, and uh, in the annual mean, he approximately computed a temperature increase in the global average on the order of five degrees. Five degrees. Okay. Now, the best, best models nowadays, remember this, is, this was calculated more than 100 years ago, so we didn't have any satellites and we didn't have any computers. Okay, so he did it basically by hand. Now, the best models today predict approximately three degrees. And I must say, uh, as, as a scientist, you know, this is sens sensational, right? Uh, 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 to compute uh, the correct result uh, 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 within a factor of two, right? Without satellites, without much data, without uh, 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 computers. Now we can see now what did happen since Vantarenius lived. So this is now the evolution of both carbon dioxide in blue and the globally average temperature in black. And you see both increased, uh, but you see immediately, and this always causes confusion, you see immediately that while carbon dioxide increases smoothly, the temperature doesn't increase smoothly, but varies a lot. But this is nothing unusual. Uh, these are just the natural climate fluctuations, and these natural climate fluctuations superimpose the long-term trend. And it is the long-term trend which is due to man's activities, especially the increase in greenhouse gases. And uh, it doesn't make sense uh, to look at short records, like a year or uh, even 10 years is not enough. You need to look at the whole record, then you can't miss the link between the increase of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and the rise in global temperature. I would li like to show you this by uh, uh, a movie. This shows now the temperature data, the same temperature data you can see uh, uh, time uh, run running at, at the bottom in, in the middle. Uh, this is the temperature evolution now geographically. And uh, I, I would like you just to realize, you know, how chaotic the system is and, and uh, that it fluctuates a lot in space, but also in time. Now we are in the 1970s, still no sign from global warming, but now you can see slowly as we approach the turn of the millennium that the planet turns kind of yellowish, reddish, orange, Okay, and now you see, you know, uh, uh, global warming has become obvious. But it takes time. We are dealing with an inert system, and inert systems uh, evolve slowly. So there is not someone uh, who, who, who turns a knob or so, and then global warming is there. No, it uh, evolves gradually. Uh, the same is true for sea level, but sea level is much smoother. So we don't see these huge fluctuations uh, from year to year or from decade to decade in sea level. So sea level, has, sea level rise has two components. One is the ice melt. We have seen these really uh, impressive uh, pictures in, in, in the preceding movie. But there is another component to sea level rise, which is thermal expansion. So you know we are talking about global warming. And in response to global warming, the water warms as well. And each body that is heated expands. And 50% of the sea level rise that we have observed since 1900 is due simply to, due to thermal expansion. So even if ice would not melt, sea level would rise. Okay? So let me just give you uh, the picture for the last 20 years or so. This is again uh, sea level rise now from satellites since 1992. And I show this because let us look at the trend over the last 20 years. 
Okay, this is the trend over the last 20 years. So sea level rise is, is, is far away from being homogeneous. There are huge regional variations. So during the last 20 years, uh, there are even regions uh, where sea level dropped. And here in this region, in the tropical West Pacific, sea level rose at a rate three times faster than the global average. So you have always to keep in mind that uh, uh, the global average doesn't really tell much for the region you are interested in. There are huge regional variations, both in temperature, but especially also in sea level. And so we need to understand you know, the system very well to also predict these regional changes. Here's the North Sea for those uh, who come from uh, northern Germany, like me. Uh, uh, we have some stations here, some tight gauge stations you see uh, that sea level is also rising here uh, in Germany uh, 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 approximately at the same rate as the global average is rising. Now, what does the future hold? Uh, I would like to quote at this point uh, Mark Twain. So Mark Twain said, uh, predictions are difficult, especially about the future. And that's true. Well, uh, I, I told you already that, you know, that there are uncertainties also in our understanding of the climate system. You know, the climate system is, is, is a chaotic system. It's, it's highly complex. We have interactions of many different subcomponents, uh, and uh, it's really hard to understand, and I, I don't want to pretend that I understand everything. But there is one uncertainty which we can't avoid. And this uncertainty or, or, uh, 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 was also something uh, that Svantarenius couldn't resolve. Okay? So uh, we don't know how we will behave in the future. So I have no clue you know, how many greenhouse gases, how much greenhouse gases we will emit, uh, say, by 2100 or so. You know, and uh, uh, I don't want to offend you here in the audience, but. Uh, I believe no one of you knows uh, how, you know, uh, uh, energy production, how the growth of the world's population, how uh, the world economy will evolve uh, during this century. So we have to run scenarios. So we, can, we must assume uh, a certain uh, uh, futures, if, if you like. And, and so uh, we do a lot of scenarios, and I present here from the latest IPCC report, with which, which was just published a few weeks ago, uh, this is the kind of worst-case scenario. So if we assume that we continue to emit greenhouse gases approximately at the same rate as during the recent decades, uh, then temperature will rise uh, relative to the present by uh, uh, in another two degrees or so. The, the uncertainty here is due to the different models. So some models are more uh, uh, less sensitive to carbon dioxide than other models, but on average uh, it's two degrees. Now, on the other hand, uh, if you follow a scenario uh, which we would phrase, uh, uh, say, draconian measures, you know, so if from now on uh, we basically stop emitting greenhouse gases everywhere on this planet, you know, the best of all worlds, then you could uh, basically achieve this uh, blue scenario, so not much uh, further warming. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I think what I want to say here is we do still have the choice. Okay, so it's not too late. We can't avoid a certain amount of warming, but you know, if you look at uh, toward the end of the century, then you see uh, uh, that there is quite a difference. And so, I, I think uh, uh, what I would like to point out here is it's worth doing something, right? It's worth taking action. Uh, extremes uh, can't really show uh, too much. I uh, brought only two figures about extremes. So one thing. Uh, uh, that uh, has a uh, large societal impact is heavy precipitation events because they can cause flooding. And we here in Germany, for instance, uh, had a, a very strong uh, flood this year, uh, uh, both at the River Elbe 
and uh, uh, in, 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 in southern uh, uh, Germany. And uh, what basically all models predict is, and I don't want to go into details uh, here, uh, uh, what the uh, uh, a figure here shows, so you can see this is uh, Europe, so these are the different seasons here. We are looking here uh, uh, at the end uh, of the century, and everything that is green, okay, uh, means that heavy precipitation events will become more frequent. And even the heaviest precipitation will become even heavier. So this then has implications, especially that we expect that flooding events will increase. So that's something we have to deal with. And it's nothing that surprises us, because in a warmer world, you can evaporate more water. And uh, so there is permanently more water vapor in the atmosphere. And if the weather situation uh, uh, is uh, such, then you have the potential uh, that heavy pre precipitation events become more frequent, but also uh, uh, that individual events can uh, 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 strengthen. Now, the same is true, and uh, th this is not a contradiction. So, uh, the, the same is true for heat waves and for drought. Shown here is heat waves. So uh, uh, everything that is uh, red or yellow uh, means that we get more heat waves. Now, this shows the change relative uh, 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 to the last decades, uh, toward the end of the century. And what this means, if you read the scale, is uh, so if you look at the yellow, for instance, then this means in a 30-year period, uh, you will have about 20 to 30 uh, heat waves more in the worst case, so in a kind of business as usual, usual scenario. And uh, also heat waves are of large societal interest and, 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 and have, of course, uh, many detrimental uh, effects, as uh, you all know. So uh, our climate will become more extreme, right? So on the one hand, uh, more extreme uh, uh, rainfall events, but also, uh, on the other hand, more heat waves, more drought. And these are not uh, uh, somehow contradictions, but uh, these are two sides of the same coin. And this coin is called global warming. Now, sea level, uh, again, huge uncertainty. The color code is basically the same. So we have a worst case scenario here. We have a kind of uh, a, a draconian measure scenario here. So sea level rise toward the end of the century. So this is one meter here uh, uh, is probably the limit. So uh, one meter is possible, but maybe not very likely. But if we go beyond, because sea level is a very slowly responding uh, quantity, if we go beyond 2,100, sea level uh, rise can be much stronger. And at some point, you can't avoid it anymore rising. Uh, then, for instance, the Greenland ice sheet will, made, will melt if we cross uh, some threshold. And only Greenland has a potential of seven meter globally average sea level rise. So this is really uh, something uh, 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 that we should pay attention to. Now, last point, where do we stand uh, with the international uh, negotiations? Uh, we have every year a climate conference. The next one will be in November in Poland. And uh, unfortunately, and I, I must confess, I hate this. I hate this to say it again and again, uh, you know, uh, that there is nothing like uh, 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 global climate protection or so. You know, so there is no binding protocol in uh, place. And, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, year after year, the climate conferences basically fail. Now, why is this? Let me just give you uh, an idea of the uh, CO2 emissions since 1990, okay, for different countries. So don't look at the individual uh, countries, just look at uh, the sum. So the upper curve, the upper black curve, and you see uh, basically the proof of what I just said, you know, carbon dioxide 
uh, emissions are increasing, although we have these climate conferences year by year. Okay, so the, uh, it's exactly the opposite happening of what should happen. If you want, uh, uh, you can look at China, for instance, okay, and you see the share of China has increased uh, dramatically. You know, some of the industrialized countries are going down. And now, you know, it has become very popular, you know, uh, uh, to accuse China, India, you know, the developing countries, the tiger states of being responsible for the climate change problem. But this is unfair. And uh, 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 these are the per capita uh, emissions. Uh, you see, uh, here is China, that China has uh, now a per capita emission, which is close to this uh, green curve. Okay, that's the European Union. So even per capita, uh, China has uh, uh, caught up uh, with the industrialized world. But, you know, it's unfair because a country like China produces for the rest of the world. Okay, so we in the industrialized world, you know, we don't produce much anymore. You know, so we basically outsourced the production. And then, you know, we should not wonder that in these countries, you know, carbon dioxide uh, emissions explode, all right? Uh, but we are still responsible, so we should not forget this. So we in the industrial world, we are responsible for those emissions, okay? Because they produce at least partly for us. And it's, I think it's unfair if uh, uh, this is not somehow balanced. And, and so, uh, uh, if we don't find a way uh, uh, of accounting for these so-called gray emissions, then I think uh, all climate conferences will fail also in the future. Now, the solution is very simple, at least for someone who is not a politician, okay? So, all we need is renewable energies. Uh, they don't produce uh, uh, CO2. The technology is developed. Uh, but you see a big but, okay? So, and the problem is, of course, is uh, at least in the short term, it's, it's expensive, okay? Although it may pay off in the long term. But that's always a problem, and this is the, this also the, the problem of the lack of sustainability or the origin of the lack of sustainability that we have only a short, way, short time uh, uh, perspective and not a long time perspective. And so I think uh, we, we should try uh, uh, to uh, uh, have more this long-term uh, perspective and, and get away for, from this short-term perspective. I would like to end with a quote from Albert Einstein. He said, we cannot solve our significant problems from the same level of thinking we were at when we created these problems. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.